What is up everyone, Johnny K here. And the other day, one of my clients came to me and they said, we have this full sales funnel build out for our webinar that we do every week, but every week we have to go in and change the date in three or four places. And that gets a little monotonous. Is there any way that you can help us set one spot that either automatically updates to the next week or that just it's one place that we can go to update our our date they're using click funnels for for this process and so i just wanted to to share my solution that i gave them uh, because it's a pretty simple solution and i think that a lot of people would benefit from that all right the first thing the first thing we need is you're going to need click funnels number one but number two i decided to go with a google sheet because it's the simplest to get started um, you don't need any kind of complicated coding or back end or anything like that it's just sitting right there i went ahead and put together this google spreadsheet and as you can see here is a date that's the auto calculated next date that um, they're looking for it happens for them every every week on a wednesday the the other thing that's important is you need to have your sheet be publicly viewable so don't stick like a bunch of uh extra stuff in here that you don't want the the whole internet to see um, even though it's just a link and most of the time people won't see it i mean there is a possibility because it, it still is publicly viewable so anyone with the link can view so then go ahead and grab that uh your url for your your sheet and you're going to use that in just a minute in our text editor Okay, so then the next piece is we're gonna go and let's talk a little bit about where we wanna stick this new date on our page. And on this page, I have two different places that I wanna stick this date. I wanna stick it here on this button um, as the subheading, and I wanna stick it right here as the heading. The first step is we need to figure out exactly the element that we want to grab. In, in CSS selectors, as we're going to be using as CSS selectors, there are three different things. There's elements, which are actual pieces on the page, and then there's IDs, and there should be only one ID on a page, and then there's classes, and there could be a whole bunch of classes on a page. So right here, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button, we're going to grab this little pound sign, and we're gonna grab this CSS ID select. Okay, so then let's jump over to our page and I'm gonna right click on the background and select inspect and then click on this console tab. This console tab is gonna do help us figure out exactly what we want to, to target. The easiest way to do this is we're gonna just paste in the button this is the format for our selector. We're gonna just put in our, our ID, and when we push enter, that's gonna show us the, the code for that button. Now, you don't have to worry about anything except this little twirl down here, and that's gonna allow us to twirl down into the button and see how the button is composed and put together. This is the piece that I want right here the piece that we're looking to change. It has a class of L button sub. So I'm just gonna grab that. I'm gonna go back to the console, push the up arrow, and put in our button sub. And if you notice, I put a dot because this is a class, but we're gonna grab that, and I'm gonna just check the dot inner HTML, and voila, that shows up with the at 7 p.m., which is the text that's already there. And so that's exactly the text that I want to update. And so just to show you that, that that you could update it right here, there it goes. I updated the text to, to something else. Now, this only happens on my browser because I'm changing the web page with Chrome. But uh, to do that for everybody, we're going we're gonna to set that up and in just a minute. So that's how you go through and do a button. The next, the next one uh, I'd like to do, let's, let's clear this out here. Um, the next one I want to just do an example of is this date right here. So to do that, let's go grab the CSS ID of our date here. And that is a headline and a number. And let's jump back over to our, our page and just the same exact methodology here. 
that gives us the date. Um, we just want to double check that we are grabbing the right piece though. So I'm going to twirl down and see. Okay, so it looks like this date um, is wrapped inside a div and the one we want is actually the second div down. So let's, let's go through and do that. I'm going to do, because it's an element, there's, you don't put a dot or a period in front of the, of the div. And let's just see if that gives us what we want. Yeah. So that gives us the date. And if we wanted to equate that to something else, then there you go. That we can, we can update that element with this query selector. Okay, so now that we have both of those query selectors uh, figured out, then the next step is we need to go through and put put this all together in a uh, in a script that we can add to our ClickFunnels page. So this is how it works. Um, I'm using the Sheetrock library, and this does all of the heavy lifting for going to Google Sheets and getting the right data out of it. All we have to provide it is the URL of our publicly viewable sheet and it will help us do all the rest. Okay, so this is the function sheetrock and we pass it our date and this, this query. And this query basically says, you know, which columns do I want to have returned to me so that I can use those. The next thing here is if you want to limit the number of elements that come back or the number of rows that come back, you can do that here where I only have one row coming back then it doesn't really matter if I use that or not but if you have a huge sheet um, the the performance can take a hit uh, and so you may want to limit it to just the, the area that you're trying to, to work with now this is the the last important piece is what do I do when this function finishes and so that callback is gonna say hey I got all this data what do I do with it and so that's this function here use event data and so let's jump back up here uh, it's going to say, hey, here's a function. If if it's not an error, then go through and use my my results. And this is, I want the the first row and the first cell in the first row. And so we're going to put that into a variable called event. And then we figured these out earlier, and we're just going to equate equate those elements on the page to uh, the the text event that we put in here. So that's really all, all there is to it. That's pretty simple. Let's go and add this to our page. We can do that by clicking on settings, tracking code, footer code, and we're gonna go ahead and paste our footer code into our ClickFunnels page. Save, and let's preview that. Let's see if this worked. Page is loading. Ah, there it is. We have our date that now shows up on our ClickFunnels page from Google Sheets. And I think this is really cool because there's a myriad of things that you can do uh, beyond that to make this even better. That was a fun tutorial. All right, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up so I know that I'm making great content. If you wanna see more of this kind of content, subscribe. And if you had comments, leave them below so I can get those answered. If you want more tutorials and more uh, how-tos, you can check those out at funnelpress.com, my website. And as always, thanks for watching.